Madame a la Licorne, a set of six tapestries from the late Middle Ages, has fascinated generations with their beautiful use of color, design, and multiple meanings. These tapestries are not only an outstanding example of the weaver's art from the late Gothic period in France, but a mesmerizing piece of art that draws the viewer in with their display of worldly sensuality and spiritual otherworldliness. The designer of these tapestries is unknown in modern times like so many artists from the Middle Ages. Scholars believe the tapestries were designed by a premier cartoonist from Paris and then woven by master weavers in Flanders. Although we do not know the artist who did the drawings, we do know that the work was commissioned by the Leviste family as their heraldry is in evidence throughout the tapestries. Entering the world of the La Dame a la Licorne, the viewer is presented with multiple meanings. Are the tapestries an allegory for the five senses with the sixth sense, understanding, being the final tapestry? Were the tapestries an ode to a favored La Viste lady who will be showered with all earthly delights? Does the pure mythical unicorn represent Christ and the lady, the Virgin Mary? Are the tapestries an allegory for renunciation of all earthly pleasures for spiritual attainment? The tapestries are seen today through modern eyes with modern frames of reference and knowing the exact meaning of the tapestries was probably never intended. As the magic of the tapestries is their mysterious meaning and astounding beauty. Tapestry is a textile art that flourished in the late medieval Gothic era. Telling tales to an illiterate public at this time, as with the revival of stone and the use of stained glass, was part of the use of the textile masterpieces of the time. The fragility of the medium, tapestries were subject to rot and discoloring, means that not many tapestries have survived. Tapestries served as indicators of wealth and status to their owners and were portable from residence to residence. The cold stone walls of chateaux and castles were often worn with the cloak of a beautiful tapestry. The deep reds and blues of the Lady and the Unicorn tapestries would imbue a cold castle or chateau with their warmth of color and their practical use of keeping drafts out of a room. When the Sixth Lady and the Unicorn tapestries were commissioned, the middle class was rising in Northern Europe, scholars were founding the first universities, and artistic subject matter was moving away from religious artworks. Humanism was extending in the written word and artworks. Courtly love rose in popularity as artistic subject matter. Courtly love elevated desire and love to something at once illicit and morally elevating, passionate and disciplined, humiliating and exalting, human and transcendent. The Dom and the Unicorn is a mixture of allegory, mythology, and courtly love. All secular topics, albeit with a spiritual overtone. At the time that the Lady and the Unicorn was made, it is thought that 15,000 weavers were employed in the Loire Valley, France, where the nobility had their country homes. The weavers of the time used only a palette of 20 colors with dyes extracted from plants locally available. Matter for red, woad for blue, weld for yellow, and extract from lichen for the purple. Wool was the most widely used material for tapestries, and the Lady and the Unicorn uses both wool and silk in its production. Measurements of each tapestry in the series are approximately 11.5 feet by 11.5 feet. At this time in history, it would have taken a skilled father-son team two months to weave just one square foot of tapestry. A much larger team of weavers would have worked on these tapestries, but most likely they would have taken several years to complete. The tapestries were originally rescued for preservation purposes in the 19th century. They were found in 1841 at Brossac Castle, Cruz, France, where bits and pieces of the tapestries had been cut off for cart covers and foot carpets. 
The French government purchased the tapestries in 1882 and brought them to Paris for preservation and display. Scholars generally agree that the first five tapestries that comprise the Unicorn series are allegorical in nature and illustrate the five senses. The sixth tapestry in the series, A Mon Soul Désir, roughly translated to My Only Desire, has mystified generations. It has been debated whether the tapestry is actually the last tapestry in the series or whether it's the first tapestry. The first tapestry, Taste, depicts the lady feeding a falcon some nuts from a bowl and a monkey sits on the ground eating a berry. The wind is blowing the lady's headdress and she is sumptuously gowned and jeweled set amidst a deep red background with a profusion of flowers and plants. The mille fleur background, also known as thousand flowers background style, was very common at the time and is thought to represent fete days in the Loire Valley when flowers would be strewn on the roads. The lion and the unicorn each hold a knightly banner of the Leviste family, the family that commissioned these works. Scholars believe that John Leviste, a courtier banker, may have commissioned these tapestries to proclaim his family's rise and status. The unicorn, a mythical, pure, untamed beast, flanks the lady along with the courageous lion. The lady's elongated, elegant figure is reminiscent of medieval Gothic figures who are more spiritual than earthly. The subject matter is about the earthly pleasure of taste and the sensation of nature all around. How to attain the purity of the untamed unicorn and the beautiful virgin amidst the sensory pleasures of all nature and the sense of taste. Details abound in the next tapestry as the lady plays a portable organ while her maidservant plies the bellows. The observer can almost hear the music as this tapestry represents the sense of hearing. As in the other tapestries, the maidservant appears smaller than the lady, reflecting the lady's importance. The lion and the unicorn not only stand guard with the Leviste pennants, but also sit on top of each corner of the organ. The organ rests on a Turkish rug, while the menagerie of animals romp in the background. During this time period, the animals would have most likely had had symbolic meaning like loyalty for the dog and intelligence for the fox. The next sense discovered by these tapestries is that of sight. The lady shows the unicorn himself in a handheld mirror. The unicorn looks pleased at his image and the lady looks sadly at the unicorn as if his self-knowledge of his beauty will be his undoing. Are we witnessing the loss of innocence of the unicorn as he experiences the worldly senses instead of the pure spiritual untamed self he originally embodied? Foxes and rabbits continue to romp in the background around a holly tree and an orange tree. The unicorn appears to be tamed by the gentle, virginal lady. According to Middle Ages mythology, a unicorn could only be tamed by a virgin. As the monkey smells the basket of roses and the lion and unicorn once again stand guard in the next tapestry, the tapestry that represents the sense of smell shows the lady smiling ever so slightly to herself as she weaves flowers into a headdress, possibly for a festival day somewhere in northern France where this exquisite example of late medieval textile was woven by who knows how many of the 15,000 weavers that would have been employed in the industry at the end of the 15th century. Touch is the subject of the next tapestry, and here we see the unicorn even more subdued than when he rested his hooves in the lady's lap in order to see his reflection. In this tapestry, the unicorn appears smaller and is allowing the lady to lightly grasp his magical horn. The monkey is chained and the unicorn tamed. 
The lady looks determined and in charge here. In this tapestry, it is the lady that bears the Leviste family banner. There are four trees and many animals in the background, giving the tapestry a fairy tale like feel. The lion looks at the viewer directly with his peaceful gaze. It is clear that these tapestries combine the earth and its pleasures, the five senses and the beauty of nature, with the otherworldly presence of smiling lions and tamed unicorns. Amonsul Desir are the only words woven into the tapestry series and roughly translate to my only desire. In the sixth tapestry, these words are on the banner above the tent that the lady is preparing to enter, possibly renouncing the earthly pleasures of the senses the world offers in exchange for her sole desire of spiritual ascension. As she prepares to enter the tent, the lady is putting away her magnificent necklace into a casket as a gesture to forsake all worldly pleasures. As in the brilliantly colored stained glass of the late Gothic period, the tapestry colors are vivid and despite the limited palette of 20 colors, come alive and enchant. The sensuality with which these tapestries were planned and executed only heightened the contrast between the physical and spiritual metaphors illuminated by the purity and innocence of the unicorn, the beauty of the lady, and the glory of the nature and senses portrayed. The final tapestry illustrates the ultimate spiritual ascension of the lady after she tamed the unicorn through exploration of the sensual pleasures of the worldly life.